really free without any environmental footprint? Well, that's an age-old question. Good job, buddy. Now go find us some dinner so we can put over this fire. Fire was probably our first form of producing energy, and releasing greenhouse gases. <coughs> Humans eventually discovered that coal, the compressed, carbon-rich remains of prehistoric forests, burn hotter and longer than wood. Burning coal is actually releasing the stored energy of prehistoric photosynthesis. It sounds like he might have something good for dinner. Yep, society's come a long way from cooking over wood fires. The issue, though, is that our growing consumption of energy is really leaving its mark on the planet. Even though we've been burning coal for thousands of years, it's still the way we produce most of our electricity today. One reason is that it's abundant, both here in the U.S. and in much of the world. The bad news is that burning this non-renewable fossil fuel increases our emissions of greenhouse gases, including carbon dioxide and sulfur dioxide. So the reason that coal is non-renewable is that it would take millions of years to replenish, even if conditions were right. So what problems do we cause when we burn it? And what are the impacts of some of the alternatives? All that carbon dioxide is the main greenhouse gas that many scientists believe is linked to climate change. The sulfur dioxide can form acid rain, and the mercury can be harmful to aquatic life and people who eat fish. All a bad deal for the environment and for people. So how much of a carbon footprint are we creating by burning fossil fuels? Well, the average person's electrical use alone generates over three tons of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere each year. And that's not even counting our emissions from driving cars or heating homes with fuel oil and natural gas. To calculate the greenhouse gas footprint for you and your family and the sources, use the emissions calculator on the EPA website. Now, before you get too discouraged by what you found, also review how carbon is recycled naturally in the environment. Plus, things are starting to look up for carbon-free alternatives. Let's go take a closer look. More places are turning to wind farms, like here in Indiana. The wind that's turning those generators up there is a renewable resource that's naturally occurring, as long as the sun shines and the earth rotates. And since wind energy emits no greenhouse gases, it's practically carbon neutral. The only carbon footprint it leaves is early on during the construction and transportation of materials to build it. But you can see them. They make a little bit of noise, and they generate some shadow flicker. Even though we can't completely replace coal-fired power yet with wind farms, these technologies help us reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. And as you've seen, that helps us reduce our carbon footprint and may lessen climate change. Some of these bigger wind turbines can each power up to 1,400 homes, and larger wind farms can power entire towns. Okay, so we learned that the future of energy production and reducing greenhouse gases hinges on alternatives. And that's right, conservation or reducing our energy consumption. So here's your challenge. 
check your electricity bills, or research online to see how much electricity a typical family uses. Then, list six simple ways that you and your family can reduce your electricity consumption. With some web searches, I bet you can come up with a dozen or more. But hey, don't stop there. Look for other ways to care for our planet, because it's the only one we've got. And that's the very best reason why you should never stop exploring your world. Here you come. Oh. <laughs> That's okay. Maybe, maybe next time, don't go after the one with the big teeth or the, the claws. Yeah, and um, we can just go out today. <sighs> so, with me flying, you brought your parachute, right? <laughs> <laughs>